All right, the first video we're going to watch today is from Ferrister. We haven't watched a video from Ferrister in a while, and it says, Can Alpha excuse all problems? People certainly try to use it to excuse all problems. Um, I, I argue a hard no on that one, but let's see what he has to say. The somewhat tumultuous start for Star Citizen Patch 318 highlighted to many players just how inactive development the game is. Yeah. Following a relatively stable period of gameplay patches, 318 brought with it problems in logging into the game, then shaky and unreliable performance for some who managed to make it in. Those elements formed a stark reminder for many players that Star Citizen you, Captain, is an alpha test. But given that Star Citizen is... F and, like... So much warning. Two letters from the chairman signifying that PES was going to cause issues. Uh, plenty of warnings, but I don't think anyone knew that it was going to be this bad, that these issues were going to arise in the way that they did. They would have never pushed it live. I, I don't think they would have ever pushed it live if they knew that it was like what was going to happen happened. I, I'm not sure they would have. Uh, it was that was nuts. Forming a more mainstream appeal as the years march on is wheeling out the old excuse. Oh, this is an alpha still appropriate. I'm Farrister, and in this video, we'll explore the answer to that question. The first and perhaps obvious point. I'm really curious what he says here, just because I have a really strong opinion about this after 318, uh, especially. And I, I think the. It is absolutely. An alpha, but. Is that yes, it's Star Citizen not. is clearly still in alpha testing. It's clearly marked on a lot of the materials out there and also in that pop up that you have to acknowledge every time you launch the game. And so, to some extent, it's appropriate to expect that what is in players' hands is not yet polished, optimized, or feature complete. But what was seen with the 318 launch wasn't those usual elements, it was game-breaking stuff, errors that stopped players from actually playing the game at all. Yeah, it wasn't bugs. I mean, they're bugs, but... There's an element that testing at scale to bring out these issues is important, and that's true. But equally, many other MMOs have launched over the years without experiencing such day one issues, because the testing happens, well, in a test environment, like the PTU. The PTU or Public Test Universe is the sandbox for future patches, where players are able to experience and test new content, knowing that it's not yet ready for the live version. And this idea is not unique to Star Citizen. Many other games run a test server to iron yep. out some of these issues before they hit the wider group of players. And even sometimes those are early access games, is my understanding as well. But this clearly didn't work for Patch 318. In part, perhaps an expectant, if not demanding community is partly to blame for that. Patch 318 was originally slated for release back in December, and was continually delayed until an eventual March release. Those delays were because it was well known the patch was not ready. There were significant problems with it that could impact player experience. And I didn't hear, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure there were some people, but I didn't hear a lot of, like, grumbling about it. I heard a lot of, take your time, when it's ready, no big deal, you know? I That's kind of the vibe that I got. I know that's how I felt about it, was like, I'm really excited to play, like it's been a year of 317, I'm really excited to play a, a, a wipe that is like fresh and ready to go. I made that comment hundreds of times, I must have. And then... I, I still believe and I stand by the statement that I made. They did what they needed to do in pushing it to the wider audience and literally having PES and, and their database just completely destroy everything, right? And they found what they needed to fix. They found where, you know, 
what was important to fix. I kind of stand by what with what they did. I'm not sure, like I said earlier, I'm not sure they would have done it if they knew it was going to be this bad. I think they would have tried to figure out a way to test it in, in the PTU somehow. Um, and they already, I think, went really head down trying to get tools so they don't have to deal with this at scale with us ever again. Um, it sounds like based on some some information, but yeah, I I just yeah, I, I'm not sure. It was a, a horrible thing that happened. I think we're gonna hopefully quickly like it just comes down to did they fix everything from the ground up and rebuild everything like proper like you know instead of a 10 year old tech debt database do we have a 2023 thing that they're working on or did they band-aid it and they probably band-aided it you know the community it's and if they did it's not worth it itself is often expectant of seeing progress and as much as the project developers are partly responsible for setting those expectations there's undoubtedly a pressure on teams to get things out of the door and into players' hands. I just don't know who was pressuring them. Like, this was the one time that I really didn't see that. Uh, and it was a long wait. I mean, we all played 317 for a year. We were all waiting for 318. But I was, I was very much, you know, I... I was, uh, you know, not really playing that much Star Citizen. I was playing different games. I was... Going, hey, I'm kind of bored at 317. Let's check out some other things, you know. And it's, you know, some of you guys in chat are thinking it was ship sales and stuff. Could be right, but I just didn't get that vibe from them. Really, like if I if I wanted to get my Star Citizen fix, I could play a little PTU and uh, you know mess around with like salvaging or something like that. But overall, I just didn't. This felt different to me that people were like, yo, take your time. Cause I wanted to play a I wanted to play a good video game. I was well, I mean, we know Star Citizen isn't a good video game yet, but I thought that there was enough tools in the tool chest for me to like make some fun for myself, given everything that was in 318 and prior. Uh so yeah. In some Until cases, perhaps knowingly, in. before they are fully ready to stand the test of time. That said, blaming the player base doesn't feel like the right way to assess this launch. Instead, whilst many people may have known that 318 needed more time in the oven, it's also possible that few expected the launch to be as problematic as it ended up being. Nobody thought it would be. It's also be. important to point out here that this... If anybody thought this would, would have happened... No, no way. Criticism isn't directed at the developers pushing the game forward, working hard on developing a game at the cutting edge of technology. This is a project management and leadership element, being able to manage expectations appropriately and know the right time to be able to set something out into the wild. There's also a judgment. But you also can't blame management on expecting this and like uh, this is a leadership problem in this specific case. Because how the hell would anybody have guessed that it would have been this bad? Again, like, I, like you can't set these expectations because these these were totally unexpected expectations. I'm involved in knowing when to keep a month with people not being able to log in. Come on, it's isolated to a more volatile test environment, and when to accept a less disruptive test at scale. It's probably more acceptable, for example, to say yes. These NPCs are standing on chairs because Star Citizen is an alpha, than it is to say, sorry, you can't log into the game, but it's okay because we said it's an alpha. Yeah, exactly. But it's easy to criticize with hindsight. I'm not a software developer, and clearly a lot of these systems are technologically groundbreaking and lay the foundations for Star Citizen to potentially be one of the all time great PC games in the future. Maybe this was all unavoidable and unfortunate, but perhaps there were also learnings to be gleaned from the experience about trying to keep a more stable build for the wider player base and isolating as much testing as possible to safer test environments. 
But what do you think? I look forward to reading your thoughts in the video comments. If you enjoyed this All right. I We'll, we'll video, let him as always, pressing more that than... like button is helpful in shaping future content here, and equally if you're not yet subscribed, you might like to click that whilst you're there to let YouTube know you'd like to see more videos like this in future. Otherwise, and as always, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you, Ferrister. The, the, the thing that I was going to say that he never really brought up is many people lined up at the door to play to play 318. Nobody lined up at the door to test 318. Nobody cared. After a while, no one cared. And they, and you know what they did? They did the exact opposite of making this work. You know, again, like he said, hindsight is 2020, but if you opened the PTU earlier out of Evo and out of wave one earlier, then you would have seen everything fall apart in the PTU. Right? But again, that's a hindsight thing. The real point that I'm trying to make is that people lined up at the door to play 318 because they wanted to play. So the it's an alpha excuse is, is a difficult one now to use, in my opinion, when you're talking about the live servers. Yes, it is still a testing environment, but the test is focused in a different direction. The test is focused on how playable is the game? Is the game enjoyable? How can this be more fun? Gathering feedback on, on those aspects of things. The PTU is, does this work or does it not, uh, typically, right? So yes, they're both testing environments and they're both used to gather gather data but the the i'm fortunate enough to to have some conversations with devs that work at the company that like on my twitch stream let's say and they do come in sometimes and they ask like our wider community questions and and gather feedback in that way sometimes as well and i noticed something funny yesterday is one of the devs who worked for the mission team was asking about, I think, prison and jump town, like two things that he works on. And he was asking on, how can I improve it? How can I make it more fun? He is asking that when the game is live, but in the PTU, when he was in chat, we were going through and resolving bugs together, right? And that's the difference. Star Citizen is an alpha, but it is also a live service. And that's what players need to recognize is that Star Citizen is not just an alpha. Players want to play Star Citizen. Players want to play it. They want to take whatever tools are in the tool chest as rusty and as few as there are and utilize them to have some fun for however long the game allows them to. And people do want to do that. People want to make progress in the game. Zero to Hero is a popular thing to do in the game. People want to play it. And you can't ignore that anymore by saying it's an alpha. Nobody cares what you have to say about that because they want to play the game. So the studio does need to focus on having the live server be playable. Having the live server be workaroundable, I, I guess is what I mean when I mean playable. Uh, and then, you know, you do have marketing out there saying playable now when people can't log into the game. It's just a bad look overall, but um, I just don't understand people defending this with the it's an alpha excuse anymore because I think there is an overwhelming majority of players who came into Star Citizen 318 because they wanted to play. If they wanted to test, they would have joined the PTU. And guess what? They went to a wider audience on live because they couldn't get enough people to test in the PTU. Nobody wants to test. People want to play. I don't care what anyone says. You pledged, blah, 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 blah. People purchased a video game. That's what they did. That's what they want to do. End of story. There are a subsection of this community, and it's a larger subsection than any other community, I would guarantee, that are totally into testing and all those things you people there's nothing wrong with you good for you thank you as a matter of fact because i don't think we would be anywhere without people like that
but there are way more people that want to play the video game than you. And that's all we need to realize. And that's it.